How you doing? My name is Dean Anastasia. I'm also known as Bam Bam here on Facebook. The uh, reason why I'm doing this video tonight is because I had a lot on my mind uh, going through something very difficult uh, at this time. Uh, my mother is very sick. Um, she's not expected to live for too long. Um, that's definitely the hardest thing I've ever been through in my entire life. Um, it's completely changed me as a person. I, I'm not the same person anymore. It's different knowing that the person that is the most important person in your life is dying. It's, it's hard to swallow that. It's surreal. It's painful. It's you're also mostly in a state of denial a lot of the times. You know, every morning I'd wake up and I'd run over to her to see if this is really happening. And, and of course, it, it is. And it doesn't seem like something you can overcome. I mean, I know you could overcome it as everyone goes through this, but it feels like something that's insurmountable. It's, it's not easy. The hardest part is watching the deterioration. You know, watching a person be completely healthy. And then seeing a little problem, and then just seeing that problem getting worse and worse, and new problems start. It's funny when I uh, first time I saw my mom. My mom was coming over to my house in New York, and she called me and she said to me, "Hey, I'm outside. I." Uh, I need help, so I didn't think anything at the time, of course, but um, I'm like, ah, here she comes, bringing a whole bunch of bags, she needs me to go out there, she's got her damn dog, and I was thinking all these things, and I was getting annoyed because I was working on the computer, I was like, alright, so I go all the way out there, and when I got out there, I saw her pretty much limping and holding herself on one wall and dragging her right leg and I was like wow and then I kind of still downplayed it I said to myself uh, maybe it's just because my mom's always had problems physically and I never imagined that it would be something so serious so anyway I went downstairs and I brought her in and I said you know, I asked her what happened, she's like, oh, I haven't been feeling well, I haven't been feeling well, you know, I feel weak, you know. So, she wanted to get up, she sat down, she wanted to get up to go to the bathroom, and I reach over to her while she's trying to get up, and she's like, no, 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 I have to do this on my own, I have to do this on my own. Mama, no, I could help you, no, I have to do this on my own, and there she was, she was trying to lift herself up and she's going like this really slow yeah and I was like wow I've never seen her like that but then you know still had no idea what it was then we went you know I was looking at my mom and she came actually she came up for um, my nephew's birthday, so I, uh, <coughs> you know, went to the party with her. She stayed at my sister's that day, the night before, and then I went over there. But when I was at the party, I really started to analyze her, started to look at her, and when I looked at her, I looked at her straight in the face. I noticed her right side was drooping, and I noticed her hand was really weak, her right hand. And of course, her right leg was weak as well, and she was dragging and walking really slow. And then it dawned on me, I'm like, oh man, it's, 
it's something in the brain. It's, it's probably a stroke. It's a stroke. It's got to be a stroke. And then that, just alone, just the thought of it being a stroke was devastating. And I couldn't even handle that. That was, that was uh, something that was really, you know, bothering me a lot. And I wasn't able to sleep. And I was arguing with my sisters. And I was like, look, uh, we got to take mommy to the hospital. I argued with her. And, they didn't really, my sisters didn't really want to push the issue because they didn't want to make my mom feel comfortable, but my biggest fear was for her to get on that plane and if she had a stroke, it would have had a blood clot in her brain and then that would have popped while she was in the air at 30,000 feet and, you know, that, I, I wasn't going to let her go on that plane, so I rushed her to go to the hospital. I told her, she's got to go, she's got to go. Finally, she went to the hospital and when they went in there, they couldn't determine exactly what it was through blood tests, through spinal tap, um, whatever all types of things that they do to figure it out. And then they said they have to go into the brain, they have to do a biopsy, they have to do a brain biopsy, because that's the only way they'll know for sure. And then she went in for the biopsy, and, and you know, a couple of days later, you know, they, uh, well, before that, my, my sister told me that they told her it was going to be, it could be anything from an infection to brain cancer. And I said, well, and of course, I'm like, all right, hopefully it's just an infection. Hopefully it's just an infection. It turned out that it wasn't an infection. At first, what, they, what the doctors thought it was, what their hunch was, what, you know, from their professional opinion before going in for a biopsy, they said it was grade 3 glioma. I, I didn't even know what the hell that means. Tasha told me, my sister Tasha told me what it was, and she said, oh, it's a form of brain cancer. I was like, oh, fuck. So then I looked it up, and then I read it, and I was like, oh. And I was like, all right, grade 3 glioma. And I kept reading about GBM4 while I was doing research on glioma and GBM, <clears throat> GBM4 is glioblastoma, grade 4. It's the worst type of cancer, the most aggressive type of cancer where 50% of all people die the first year in 12 months and by year 5 almost all of them are dead. Um, so. When I saw that, I was like, but I still wasn't 100% sure because we, the biopsy results didn't come back. So then I had just my mind set, okay, maybe it's just a benign tumor, maybe it's an infection, maybe this, hoping, hoping, hoping. And I kind of like pushed the thought because I didn't want to think brain cancer. You know, that's the last thing. It's just, you know, Kennedy died from brain cancer and you know and you know, he had all the money in the world he couldn't couldn't save himself so you know so then the results came in and when the results came in you know that they, they called us in and we went to go me and my sister Michelle we went and we sat down with the uh, with a lady we, you know it was her oncologist up there and before she even told us anything, she was already tearing. So I was like, I knew this wasn't going to be good. And so she sat down and she said, well, do you see this? And she showed us the MRI scans. And she went in and she was showing us layer and layer of MRI. And, you know, and it was just this, this mass that was sitting right in her thalamus. Um, and she said, you see this? This is swelling called edema, edema, and you know, this is the tumor, and the tumor is sitting right in the thalamus, which is, affects her motor skills on the right side of the body, because it's on the left side of her hemisphere, and also affects her speech and her memory. Um, and she's like, you know, this is a very aggressive cancer, it's the most aggressive cancer. And I was like, oh, it's just how, how long do we have, how long, how long do we have? And she said about 12 months. Twelve months. So 
so, um, you know, you know, since that day it was, you know, it's just, you know, life hasn't been the same at all. It hasn't, you know, your reason, your purpose, and your aspirations, and things you want to do, and what inspires you, or, you know, things you enjoy, nothing's the same, nothing's the same. It's no one like a mom. Moms are irreplaceable. You only get one. Unfortunately, you know, it's reality. Reality just fucking sucks, but it is something we have to all deal with. So ever since then, it's just, you know, pretty much dedicated 100% of my life for my mom and for her final days. I, um, you know, this is all I have, whatever. It's, um, it's, um, the most important person you have in, in your life, and they'll be gone in a short amount of time. That like, this is it. This is it. This is every single moment I take a picture of this. I record everything just because I don't know how much time I have, really. And it's not only the time, yeah. Maybe she could live 12 months or 6 months two years is also the quality of life that's degraded. She's there, but she's not there. And every day you lose just a little bit more, you lose a little bit more, you lose a little bit more. So every day you have to enjoy that day because you don't know how much of her you have left the next day. <clears throat> 